She knows my students, my kids. Her, they, they treat the kids here like their own, their family. It's not a school, it's a family. This is a family. We are family here. You want me to trust my babies to go somewhere else, to be stuck in classrooms more big just to fit all of us in there and then other schools and whatever. No. no. So I hope us being here is making some kind of something because it seems like we got two minutes to talk. Okay, that's it. You guys write down some things, not all. Questions will be answered, but is there going to be a, something that's going to solve the problem? Um, yeah. So that's all I've got to say. Tahoe, I love Tahoe. I love the community. I love the family. I love the family. I I feel safe for my kids to be here. I don't get calls just saying that my kids did this or need help on this. I get calls, your kid is this, your kid did this. I, I love having your, student, uh, your child as my student. That's what I want. Not Mark Twain where I'm afraid somebody's going to pick up my child because some father called and said they're picking, I have a waiting outside on the corner. She's going in fourth grade, by the way. Fourth grade. Crying her eyes out. So safety was not even thought about when you decide to say safety and March Twain together. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mary. I have a son that's in sixth grade. I have grandkids that come here. I uh, moved down from Fresno. My son is a child that has a learning disability. When we were in Fresno, um, a lot of their concerns were also the budgets. There are schools there, they all have pro probably over 34, 36 students in a class. He was supposed to be on a special ed class to, to, to learn. I brought him here to this school. They tested him immediately. They put him into Miss Yee's class. The first day that he's in here, he, uh, first week that he's here, he brings home his homework every week that she gives him uh, sight words. My son was on, um, mind you, he's supposed to be in seventh grade. He was on a second to third grade reading now. He was not even able to read like my normal third, fourth grade grandchild. He was very frustrated in Fresno. We come from a big school, and you guys want to move these kids that are in small classes, but yet they're all learning. I have a grandson that's also has a learning disability. That's going to be tested and get into this class. It's only in second grade. My son now can read 80, 80 to 85 to 60 words per minute. He has come up a long way from where he was in Fresno. And that's because of the school that we have here, this school. I chose this school because my granddaughter was coming here. She didn't come here from kindergarten. I would not want to switch him any other school. But now, when he comes home so concerned that they're going to switch the school, he's going to have to go somewhere else. Now my grandson is going to have to struggle into a class that you guys want to combine because there's not enough students here. We don't have enough enrollment. How are you going to want to have a little school that the kids are learning to take them into another school and you're going to put 500 students into a class Try to make it into another class and divide all these kids. What about those kids that have a learning disability? You're not going to have a class that's going to be small enough that only has 16 students like kids because you're going to have all these kids go over there and now they have more learning disability kids and that class is going to be big. They're not going to have time to try to learn. He's learned a lot and you guys are taking that away. It's not all about the budget money, it's about the kids. Because they have to think about the kids, try to budget. There's money somewhere if they learn how to budget the right way. Thank you so much.
Uh, I make myself pretty visible. I live on the corner of 61st and 8th Avenue. Three doors, three houses down. Um, tomorrow morning I'll be out here with some flyers. They're at San Pinello Center tomorrow. They're asking for our support. They're going to all the schools, this, this organization. And we're, we're making our voice real loud with just a signature. So I'll be out here asking you to sign. Mr. Little, I will also be going because you know what? Homeowners with no children, you close the school, you lose property value since we want to make it fiscal, right? Yep. So.
you know, and it's going to continue to go down. I was just overhearing a couple of parents back and say, I'm going to homeschool my child, I'm going to take my child out, I'm going to move, I'm going to do all these things and move to a different area. You're going to lose enrollment again. You know, this is the time to take an opportunity and listen and do something about it, proactive like you did with the tax with everything else. That was my job as an accountant when I did the budget. And also numbers could always be worked about or massaged until the next quarter. Don't overspend, but work with it. Because hopefully there's a, in, there's a light to the end of the tunnel. And by working with your families, and they're telling you now, right? Are you supportive and finding ways of doing it? You know, because you guys don't want to be in a big school. I grew up in a very small school. It was very successful. Just keep a track of these kids. First, past five years have been cuts. Cuts in schools, PE, language, large enrollment, counselors, you name it, it's been cut. Now you're telling them to go to, they came from a 300 school. If everybody moves as it is, it's like, let me tell you, I did a little chart and figured out that if the kids move to the areas you want it, it's going to be maximum capacity. 800 children. It's going to be a big impact on those children. And now hearing these parents of all their concerns, take it into consideration. Like I said, I'm just one parent. You guys have the power to do it. You guys have to manipulate the ways, and the parents are here to help you guys. Thank you. Thank you. You know, you say here you guys make a decision on February 21st. Um, and then I got an open enrollment form letting you know that I have an opportunity. Um, but at first it does say here that, you know, we are, as the students get, you know, recommended for school, clo school closures and the open enrollment goes, uh, they'll be given priority. But then later on in the paragraph, you go on to say that it's going to be an opportunity. So the priority goes away because then it becomes an opportunity based on the fact of space availability. So when you're not even coming to a conclusion as to what schools are closing until the 21st, which is two days after the open enrollment starts. Two days after the open enrollment. So if there's a really crowded school and I want to go sign my school, son up for it, I can't until two days afterwards because I won't know what you guys decide. So are you really deciding what you want to do based on the children? I think not. Because you're not giving me the opportunity I need to make sure that I'm getting my school with my student where I want it. Which if I get him and I find out you guys are closing the school, I'm going to shoot for feet and hers, because I'm not going over that one. And if that doesn't happen, then you never know that I'm moving out of this community. Which in turn is going to fall less in this environment for me. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. So when you're telling me that you're taking the kids into consideration, you're giving me a day the 21st when you're going to decide this. And then the open enrollment that you're telling me my son's going to be giving the priority in one paragraph, and then later on telling me that he's going to be basically, you know, in the open enrollment pro process with an opportunity, you're giving me a double standard. And you're giving me a date later on. And sure, yeah, it's until March 8th. But when you have a school that is limited on space availability, I'm not going to make that two days after the fact. Take that into I forgot to tell you that where you are standing right now, I said a speech in sixth grade saying all the wonderful things I had to say about Tahoe. I forgot to say that throughout all these years that I've been in Tahoe, I've made so many memories that you are planning to take away. I have te teachers here are my second family and my sister and my cousin both go here. I have many other family members as well that come here and the fact that you want to take it away hurts a lot. It hurts everyone in here. Everyone here is holding back tears because it hurts so much and you are tearing a family apart. Christy 
Christine Anderson, back again. I told someone earlier I wasn't going to speak. It looks like you're not going to be able to shut me up. <laughs> um, first of all, is everybody here familiar with NIMBY? It's, it's, it's an acronym for not in my backyard. Well, guess where my backyard is? Our backyard. Yeah, we share a fence. We share a fence, and no one has given me any idea what's going to happen to the safety of my offense that I've seen teenagers fight over. One of them belonged to me and won't go again. But I want to know what plans you've made where you have really thought through what you're going to do with this. Because I don't want a huge, empty, yeah, in my backyard. Nimby's. Number two, this was handed to me last night. I haven't had an opportunity to uh, go through as well as I'd like. But this is called Closing a School Best Practices Guide. Okay. Now I'm a retired state auditor. I realize this is not a mandate. However, it is a, an important guideline that a controlling agency, the California Department of Education, put together. Some of the things they talk about is the fact finding. I want to know what fact finding you performed before we got to this spot. I want to know that you're gathering a facts that are credible, transparent, and non-political. What assurances am I going to get when all this is done and sprung us at the last minute? Okay, let's come up then. Thank you, we will address it. We are students here and we want to verify that we do trust our teachers here and that they trust us enough to let us be helping the kids younger than us. I, me and my cousin, we help at a kindergarten class at our time to help them with their workshop and the things that they need to do. And we also help kids um, at lunch, give them like we give them their trays, tell them which way to go on the the salad bar, and we help them. We help the kindergartens, and the kids are just so nice. And learning, 
how it affects their behavior, and how long does it take to truly become part of that new community. I experienced that with a group of students when my school, Marion Anderson, down the street was closed, and I came here, and I followed my students because I wanted them to have a sense of community. I know wherever I go, I will work hard to build that community, but has anyone looked at that part of the picture? What it does to test scores, what it does to the community at the school when we take and move? And is there a number of value that we can put on community? Can you buy community? Can you save money on community? When I was looking for a house to buy, I looked in this neighborhood because I wanted to be part of the community I taught in. Ultimately, I wasn't able to afford it, had I moved by the house in this community, I would be outraged right now. I see that we have a lot of parents here. I don't know that they know how the rest of this decision process is going to be made. Does everyone here understand what happens next? No. Does everyone know which person in this room is the board member that will vote for you? No. Can you raise your hand, sir? This is the man that speaks for you, and me, and everyone else in this room that has a seat. This is Jeff Cunio. Nice to meet you. I'm not saying I'm for or against this. I'm saying we need to think about it, and I know my time is up, but several people have had multiple tries, so I'm going to take 30 more seconds. I was paying attention. Um, I just questioned the one statistic about the number of elementary schools and total number of students. We can play with numbers and make them work in the favor of what we want. How many of those schools are year-round? How many of those are year-round schools? I would understand that a year-round school could support a lot more students than one that's not. Are we comparing apples to oranges? Just something to think about. Thank you. Thank you.
don't get excited just about tests and I'm like, I, sometimes I don't, even, I don't even get the right answers, but I'm like always happy to like come to school, see my teachers, learn about new things and do homework. Like one of my friends, they love homework and they love this school so much, they remember everywhere that they will never get lost, even though they just came here in fourth grade. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. I've noticed the way you have um, the writers out there, and I've also noticed that the writers are not working down what they're something insignificant like you, but I like it. It's a nice school. Okay, I know a, a lot of kids are very competitive. Okay, but that's not all the students said. She went into um, the, um, about the, the start program, the magical web program. Um, the magical web program. Other students from other colleges come here themselves and provide service for these um, other children. And it, it's like, you guys don't know us, and you don't know none of the students. So, okay, maybe it's just a voice, just something to write down. Okay, that's fine, but it's like, put down the actual facts that we're trying to portray in our voices to you guys. And that's part of the situation. My other comment is to uh, Jeff, it's like, it, it, are you really hearing what we're saying? Because it's like, this whole meeting, it seems like this school is about to be shut down. It's like we're basically going hot air. We're just basically in fact we're trying to appease us by giving any kind of of course what we do have. It is like it's not even you're shutting down on our school. It's like it, it seems like like the other gentleman said, the school's already done and over with. There's nothing to be done. Basically, that's how I feel. And it's like are are you guys fighting for us? Is he fighting for Tahoe, for the underdog, basically, or is it just for show? That's what so I want. We are going to take an answer. We will make sure that all you know, answers and uh, all responses are provided to you. We will make sure that all the questions and all the statements are written down. Thank you. No problem.
closing their school desk practices today. It's a really amazing document. Like I said, I just got it yesterday, so I haven't had a lot of time to really analyze it. I'm still gathering the facts. There's quite parts to this. If anyone doesn't have it, you can go online to the Department of Education's website and get it. But just in gathering the facts, there's a recommendation that you um, develop a district advisory committee. And that committee should be composed of parents, parent groups, service organizations, landowners, um, college uh, or student representatives, collective bargaining groups, recreational elements, religious elements, teachers, and administration. Have any of us, excuse me, have any of you had an opportunity to have some input to these decisions before tonight? Again, when you, you uh, answer my question about this, I would like to know every instance where you decided not to follow it and what the reason was. What is the justification for not letting this parent become involved? I, I want to know. I'm not going to be smart. It's going to be let's do it rationally. Let's do it carefully. Let's see that we don't end up underserving this 